Hello everyone. How are you all? It's myself, Sanat Kumar. I'm here to explain to you regarding one of the topics from animal physiology. Students, if you all remember in the last class when we met, I was talking to you regarding the nervous system, neuron, structure, function, and the communication between the neurons. When we spoke about communication between the neurons, I explained to you regarding two important methods that are there to bring about transmission between true neurons. Now, one of the methods is through chemical transmission. The second one was electrical transmission. In the chemical transmission, as I have explained to you, the neuron secretes some chemical. Through that chemical, the target cell or the next neuron gets stimulated and it will be responding to it. Now, in this class, we are trying to understand regarding these small chemical substances that are produced by the neurons. And these chemicals are nothing but the neurotransmitters. Okay, so let us get started. Now, students, if you look at this picture, as we have uh, discussed in the last class, we have drawn this picture on the board. Uh, you can easily remember this is a picture showing the neuromuscular junction. And in fact, you can see a synapse here. This is the synaptic uh, cleft that we were talking about. And this is the uh, neuronal end bulb. This is the target cell. And this may be a target cell of the tissue or it may be a neuronal dendritic structure okay so here you can see the neuronal end bulb consists of the vesicles these vesicles they consist of what are known as the neurotransmitter chemicals okay so they are in fact produced by the neurons fine so what is the role of these chemicals as we have discussed already the role of the chemicals is to communicate between two neurons are to communicate between the neuron and the target cell. So in this neuronal cleft, as you all can see, the dotted structures that they have uh, picturized here, they are going and getting attached to what are known as the receptors, the blue color ones that you can see here, they are known as the receptors. These receptors receive the neurotransmitter molecule once the neurotransmitter molecule comes and attaches to the receptor it is able to elicit a response and this response is of two types one thing is it may be uh, bringing about excitation of the target cell uh, or post synaptic uh, membrane or it may bring about inhibition response in the target uh, cell okay so as you can see this is the presynaptic membrane. This is the postsynaptic membrane. This is the neuron that is getting secreted into the neuronal cleft. And you can see the neurotransmitter coming and getting attached to the, uh, the receptor. Okay. So let us move further. So let us have a brief uh, introduction regarding the neurotransmitters. Friends, as I have told you, neurotransmitters are the chemical substances that bring about the transmission of nerve impulse. We have discussed already what is the mechanism of transmission of nerve impulse. And now when the communication occurs between two neurons, now these chemical substances play a very, very important uh, role. Okay, so when we talk about uh, these chemical substances playing a very important role, they in fact, they in fact use what are known as the receptors. Now, once the presynaptic membrane consists of the vesicles, as you have uh, seen in the previous slide, these vesicles, once they release the neurotransmitter here, these receptors, they get uh, stimulated to bring about a response chain of uh, responses, okay? Now, one of the very important step that occurs is either opening or closing the ionic channels okay so in the uh, plasma membrane structure that you have already studied in the previous classes you have understood there are ionic channels that are present on the plasma membrane these ionic channels are stimulated by the neurotransmitter whether to open 
are close so that bringing about the transmission of nerve impulse okay now some of them even uh, function through what are known as the second messengers to influence chemical reactions inside the cell okay so in this picture you you are able to see how the neuronal communication takes place we know the structure of the neuron this is a cyton this is the axon these are the telodendrites see now you can see here the uh, neuronal end bulb that is communicating with the cyton of the other neuron now if we can just maximize this picture and see this is the neuronal end bulb that is bringing the information these are the a neurotransmitter of vesicles and once they are stimulated uh, through the entry of calcium ions which are electrically gated channels and the neurotransmitter is getting released into the cleft that is present in the synapse and there are receptors that are present on the post synaptic membrane which bring about the uh, which receive the neurotransmitter and bring about the response okay so let us move further now in this uh, uh, picture also you are able to visualize the neuronal communication now many neurotransmitters they function as hormones as you all know very well hormones uh, secreting cells they may be endocrine cells they are present in the ductless uh, glands and especially in the nervous system if they are secreting some chemical substances they are known as the neurosecretory cells clear now now if you uh, let us go to the types of the uh, neurotransmitters broadly there is two categorization of the neurotransmitters number one small molecule neurotransmitters and neuropeptides now so if you look at the next flow chart uh, that i have uh, pictureized here so you can see the classification of the neurotransmitters and different types of neurotransmitters that come under the different groups you can see here acetylcholine biogenic amines peptides that are present some of the amino acids they are directly function you can see here the glycine glutamic acid gaba aspartic acid they are the amino acids that are involved in the neuronal transmission and there are peptides vasopressin serotonin you can see and the biogenic amines are also we shall see each one step by step now these are the chemical structure of the uh, different uh, neurotransmitters which you can visualize here and the chemical structures you can see uh, how exactly the neurotransmitters are there so let us see two different types of neurotransmitters number one small molecule neurotransmitters students they play a very important role in causing what is known as the most acute responses of the nervous synapses okay so uh, for example if you have to take what is acute response whenever the stimulus to sensory neurons bring an information to the brain and the brain responding it the response has to be communicated to the target cell so if we consider muscle cell as the target cell the transmission of sensory signals back to the muscle cells is also done by what are known as the small molecule neurotransmitters fine now so where they are synthesized the next point is where these uh, small molecule neurotransmitters are synthesized in fact they are synthesized in the cytosol the presynaptic neuronal terminal students remember so just now i discussed regarding the synapse and in this synapse presynaptic membrane postsynaptic membrane now where are these small molecule neurotransmitters are synthesized they are synthesized in the presynaptic neuronal terminal okay so what is their role they have two important roles number one excitatory in function or they may be inhibitory in function okay so both the responses either excitation or the inhibition are brought about in the target cell okay so now the next question is once the uh, neurotransmitter is released what is going to happen to this uh, neurotransmitter further okay so these neurotransmitters are usually they are recycled okay so recycled and they are used again well, next type of neurotransmitters that we come across are the neuropeptides 
what are these neuropeptides they are synthesized in the ribosomes ribosomes that are present in the neuronal cell body ribosomes as you all know very well in the microbiology the ribosomes uh, they sorry the ribosomes they help in synthesizing the proteins as an integral part of these proteins the neuropeptides are synthesized you can see here students peptide the word peptide itself indicates the protein molecule okay now what is their role and once they play their role neuropeptides play their role they are not going to be the used remember this the distinction between the neurotransmitter and the neuropeptides they are not reused okay now what how do they play their role so they bring about prolonged closing of calcium channels so we know very well the membrane also contains the calcium channels and these neuropeptide function by closing the calcium channels and they also bring about activation or deactivation of genes and many other functions okay so when we consider the neuropeptides we are not uh, saying the word protein peptide is a small protein what is the number of amino acids that are present ultimately they may have around 3 to 40 amino acids okay Now let us consider some examples. Examples for the small molecule neurotransmitters. There are three important types of examples that I have categorized here. Number one, acetylcholine, the major neurotransmitter, and various amino acids, as we have seen in the previous uh, flowchart, and uh, the biogenic amines. Okay, so this is an interesting picture that I have collected from the net, where you can see how. Uh, this uh, cartonization they have uh, done to show the communication between neuronal end bulb one presynaptic neuronal end bulb to the post synaptic neuronal end bulb the golden uh, dots that you can see here they are getting secreted by the presynaptic uh, membrane okay now let us see the first uh, type of small molecule neurotransmitter that is the acetylcholine very major a neurotransmitter that is secreted where it is secreted it is majorly secreted in the neurons of the peripheral nervous system as you, as you all know students that we have classified the nervous system into two major categories number 1 cns number 2 pns that is central nervous system peripheral nervous system in the neurons of the many neurons of the peripheral nervous system the acetylcholine is secreted and also some of the cns neurons brain neurons like the pyramidal cells of the motor cortex which is there in the brain they also secrete the acetylcholine and basal ganglia of the neurons and neurons of the skeletal muscles preganglionic neurons of the autonomic neural system also secretes acetylcholine okay so what is the role what is the role whether it is excitatory or inhibitory it is excitatory neurotransmitter majorly acetylcholine is a excitatory neurotransmitter okay so directly it acts on the ligand gated cation channels okay so it it acts on the ligand gated cation channels that means the receptor will be there once the ligand goes and attaches to the receptor so there the receptor opens up the uh, calcium channels you know uh, cation channels you know this very well when i have explained to you regarding the neuromuscular junction functioning where the acetylcholine attachment brings about the opening of the sodium channels and leading to opening of the calcium channels that is the response brought about by the acetyl line now now is there any inhibitory role of the cell colon yes so even though it is not a major function but it still functions as a inhibitory hormone by slowing down the heart rate at the inhibitory synapse and also in the parasympathetic neurons of the vagus nerve the parasympathetic neurons of the vagus nerve there the acetylcholine functions as a inhibitory neurotransmitter the next question is how does the uh, cell is able to produce this acetylcholine there are two important components that are involved in production of acetylcholine number one coenzyme a and the choline 
these two components come together in presence of what is known as an enzyme known as the choline acetyl transferase in presence of this enzyme the coenzyme a and the choline come together producing acetyl choline okay so once acetyl choline functioning is done it is degraded by what is known as the choline esterase enzyme now let us come to the second type of uh, the small molecule neurotransmitters they are glutamate and aspartate the amino acids glutamate and aspartate and gaba let us see one by one the glutamate and aspartate they are powerful excitatory neurotransmitters okay so they are powerful excitatory neurotransmitters and most excitatory neurons in the cns brain they communicate through the glutamate and inactivation of these glutamate and aspartate molecules is through reuptake by the glutamate transporters yeah so we have seen in the acetylcholine it was sequestered and here we are seeing they are be uptaken by the glutamate transporters okay so the next type of uh, amino uh, acid in fact uh, the gamma butyric acid and the glycine they are the next type of uh, neurotransmitters their major function is you can see here uh, they are the inhibitory neurotransmitters okay so their inhibitory role during the neuronal transmission is through opening up of what are known as the chloride channels remember so once they open up the chloride channels they bring about inhibitory response okay so where do we find gaba gaba is found only in the central nervous system that is in the brain and in the spinal cord about half of the inhibitory synapses use glycine so in the brain it is using the gaba and in the uh, spinal cord it is using the glycine and the remaining so that means the remaining 50% it will be using GABA. Okay. So the next type of neurotransmitters are the biogenic amines. Now, these uh, biogenic amines are certain amino acids that are modified. So what is the modification usually? So usually they are decarboxylated to produce what are known as the biogenic amines. Fine. So usually three types of uh, biogenic amines we see which function as the neurotransmitters number one epinephrine and norepinephrine dopamine and serotonin so okay so three important biogenic amines let us see and the examples for neuropeptides they are substance p encephalins endorphins dynorphins and hypothalamic inhibitory and releasing hormones angiotensin 2 and cold cystokinin these are the examples for the neuropeptides fine now what is this neuropeptide substance p it is found in the sensory neurons sensory neurons that uh, feel the sensation and transmit it to the brain okay so and they are also found in spinal cord pathways okay and part of the brain associated with pain which enhances the perception of the pain okay so these are uh, present in sensory neurons the major function of the sensory neurons is to bring about the perception of the pain in fact they increase the perception of the pain now the next type of neuropeptide is the encephalins these encephalins they inhibit the pain in fact you can see so they are functioning in opposite to the substance P sub by suppressing the action of the substance P another uh, um, uh, neuropeptide that helps in inhibiting the pain are the endorphins fine so endorphins they play an important role in memory and learning also and sexual activity the major function is to inhibit the pain by blocking the substance p that we have discussed previously fine now the other type of uh, neuropeptides are related to the uh, dynorphins that are related to controlling pain and registering emotions fine next now 
The next type of neuropeptides are hypothalamic releasing and inhibiting hormones in the endocrinology. We are very much aware the hypothalamus it is producing what are known as releasing and inhibitory hormones, which has a direct effect to control the secretions of the pituitary. They also function as neuropeptides. Another neuropeptide that we see is the angiotensin. Two. What is its major role? The major role is it stimulates the thirst, and we all know. So in the excretory physiology, we'll be seeing the functioning of the angiotensin. Uh, it, so first of all, it is increasing the thirst, regulate blood pressure in the brain, and also causes vasoconstriction and ionic balance. Okay. So these are the uh, functions that are performed by the angiotensin two. Now the next one is the next neuropeptide is the cholecystokinin CCK. You would be hearing regarding cholecystokinin in the digestion physiology and where it is found. So small intestine and the brain. Uh, what's the role? It regulates feeding. In fact, it has a negative impact by reducing the appetite or reducing the heating uh, nature. Okay, so that's the role of uh, CCK and during the digestive functioning it also uh, regulate the release of pancreatic enzymes and also brings about the contraction of the smooth muscles during the peristalsis okay Now, uh, students, uh, this is the last slide. I would like to stop this video here. Okay, so there's a brief introduction regarding the um, neurotransmitters, their types and brief functions. I will be sharing the notes also with you. Please go through the slides again and uh, you are free to ask the doubts. If you have any doubts, you can post the question in the WhatsApp group specific time i will inform you and i would like to answer and i'll give you a few questions regarding the topic that we have discussed try to answer these questions and any suggestions you're welcome and i'll be posting the same video in the my watch uh, youtube channel and there also you can view this video okay so thank you for watching